Hello! The sun is very bright on my eyes. Hi guys, it's Jackie, I'm back with another video. Because so many of you have asked to know more about me and Reese, especially since the Paris video, uh, so many people have messaged me on Twitter and on Snapchat with such incredible messages about our relationship and about that video and stuff like that. And so I just wanted to make a video about that. Firstly, just to say thank you to everyone for your incredible messages from people just saying things, you know, that like we inspire them as a couple and, you know, in a, in a, in a world where being different, I suppose, is not what's considered socially acceptable. Still in a lot of cultures, even though in both the US and the UK and many other countries, being gay or lesbian or whatever is legal now, it's what should be considered socially socially acceptable. Like that means a lot to me and to Reese to know that we could help you out in, in a little way. <sighs> but quite a few people in the last couple of days have asked me to talk about our story. I was speaking to Reese about this this morning and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do it. Last night I started thinking about this video in my head and, I, and when someone messaged me this morning on Twitter and said, you know, I'd, I'd love to see a video about your story, I thought, well, I'm, it's gonna be the video I'm gonna make today then because it's been, especially since the Paris video, a big request and yeah, so here it is. <laughs> I have the leftover of a cold, by the way, so I'm sniffling quite a lot. Sorry about that. So, skip back to this time last year, I just finished my contract on the Carnival Sunshine and I knew I was heading to the Carnival Pride. We actually flew out on April 4th and there was four of us who flew out the day before the contract started because we were from England and Canada um, and two of those people was me and Reese. And I mean I was a bit sad because I was supposed to be in Amsterdam with my cast from my previous contract and I couldn't go because I'd got this contract and I'd, I'd woken up the day that we signed on the ship was my birthday. And I was really sad and I'd FaceTime my friends in Amsterdam and I'd actually cried because I was so sad that for the first time ever in my life I'd woken up on my birthday and I didn't know anyone. I, there was no one that I knew, like friends or family or colleagues or anything, there was no one that I could kind of celebrate my birthday with. And that's really sad actually, that was quite hard hitting. And considering it was like I turned 23 so birthdays don't mean all that much to me anymore like they do when you're a kid. That, yeah, it kind of hit me hard, but we'd been for dinner the night before, so we, like, we'd all met the, the four of us that had flown in the night before, um, and Reese was staying just down the corridor from me, and we're leaving in the morning, and we, we still talk about this now, the fact that I offered to share my luggage cart with Reese. that was the first kind of moment that we had. But it became pretty clear to both of us that we were gonna be close on this contract, kind of straight away, like, in the first afternoon, the first day on a ship is crazy. It's um, like different meetings and safety briefings and stuff like that, and you find out like, your duties and stuff. And it's more overwhelming for a new hire, but it's still a crazy day anyway. Um, you know, you're getting into your cabin, you're meeting the rest of your cast, you're meeting the whole team. It's just a, it's a lot to take in. Um, and me and Reese had kind of already been glued at the hip from the start of the day. We just seemed like we were just gonna get on from a friend point of view. Um, it was that night, we went to the crew bar on the ship to have some drinks, because it, it was my birthday, and you know everyone was sort of like, it's your birthday, we've got to do something. It was quite clear then that something was gonna happen. And then actually it was only the second night on board, things kind of already started to happen, and we'd already like been talking loads, and it was becoming quite obvious to both of us that we both were already kind of interested in the other person. And then that night, after a, a few drinks, a crew bar, after rehearsal, uh, we ended up kissing. I've always been someone that's kind of said that I wouldn't ever mix business with pleasure. I didn't really agree with it. And yeah, it happened. And we were both kind of a bit like, whoa. <laughs> and then the next day we were both really weird with each other. I remember messaging my friends from my last cast and being like, look, oh my god, guys, I fucked up already. I, you know, me and this guy in the cast got really close and then we had a few drinks last night and we ended up kissing and now we're not talking and I'm really worried. And in the end, I kind of bit the bullet and we were at the coffee shop on the ship and I was like, look, are we okay? And he was like, yeah, why wouldn't we be? And I was like, oh, I don't know, I just panicked a little bit, I suppose. That happened. <laughs> And then over the course of like the next couple of weeks, 
we just got closer and closer, and it was kind of a secret thing. Though I don't think we were like, inconspicuous. We were, it, we were kind of making it obvious, but not saying anything about it in the same sense. Like we would always be together. We'd always go to the like, to dinner together. We would always like, go for breakfast before rehearsals and stuff like that. And it was that really cute start of the of the relationship where every second counted for us. And like we would say, we'd spend all day rehearsing together, and then. We come back from rehearsals and we were on the same harmony parts for all the songs. So then we'd like go through all our harmonies as well, and then like after all that, we'd then like sit in bed in our separate cabins, chatting on like WhatsApp or Facebook chat. Which on ships is a big thing because you have to pay for internet. You know, that's like <laughs> it's not like any normal thing. Like we're investing in the relationship already. Oh no, I spilled coffee everywhere. Oh, waste of good coffee. So then yeah, um, some. Like we continued like that for a couple of weeks and we quickly realised that we had a really good connection we had a lot in common, we wanted the same things out of life we'd been through a lot of the same things like with family and stuff and we just kind of latched on to each other very first day and like we still say now like my initial thought going into it was that we were just going to be the best of friends <laughs> it was obviously more than that then what happened? oh, stuff was happening and shows were opening this one night, I don't really know how it happened. We just kind of sat down and said like, well, this is obviously a thing, like, should we make it a thing? If that makes sense. And that was it. And then after the cast change process, which is like eight weeks, um, we all moved into our individual cabins after sharing and we knew Reese was getting a cabin with a double bed. So like we went out and did like really cute things and we got like a humidifier for the cabin and this like comforter set from Walmart and we it quickly progressed into this relationship that was just incredible and amazing and we would do things in ports like really cool things together like we'd go to we'd spend a day at Atlantis in Nassau or we'd go to SeaWorld or we'd just hire a convertible in Florida and just drive around for the day and just have a just the craziest times and every second was always so much fun that we never even looked back it just from from the get-go was just something amazing and the thing about ships is relationships on ships are like dog years so like seven months on a ship is like four years in real life going into the ship and ha starting a new relationship but then spending every single day together for seven months it was a huge test you quickly become a lot more comfortable with someone than you possibly would do like dating in the real world i suppose you essentially just you're like you're living together straight away and you can't get away from each other you're working with each other which could have been a really bad thing but it ended up being just a really good thing and we got on like a house on fire and it, w it was maybe like three months into the four months into the contract we'd already decided that we wanted to do our next contract together and that we, w we were start we started making plans for after the contract and then we booked our first vacation together, which was a week in Abu Dhabi. And yeah, it was just, it was incredible. And then throughout the kind of course of the contract, we got closer and closer, and the relationship just went from strength to strength. And then the real test for us was when we got home from the contract, then going from such close quarters to living three hours away from each other. And because we had already been offered a contract for March and we finished the contract in November, we knew we had four months at home. We had to get a job, we had to, survive at home for a while and we were both a little bit nervous how that would work out for us then not being with each other but it just put us on a whole other level and it was weird like you get so used to having someone in your life it was just crazy to then go and kind of wake up in the morning and adjusting to normal life from ships after a contract is weird anyway like waking up and having daylight and your room is rocking and to then have to adjust to the fact that you're not spending time with someone as well. It's that saying that like fond blah, 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 blah. Um, distance makes the heart grow fonder and it really did and then and then while we were in Portugal we really spoke about kind of things for the future and where we were going in this next year or so. The main thing I want to get out there is that like some people have come to me like as a result of the Paris video and been like you guys are so cute and I'm so happy for you but I'm never gonna find that and stuff like that and I just want to let you know that it's easy to look at someone's relationship whether it's mine and Reese's or anyone else's on YouTube and, and just think 
like, oh my god, they're so perfect. But you need to remember that YouTubers are only showing you what they want you to see. Like, I'm not denying the fact that me and Reese have an incredible relationship and we are incredibly happy. You still only see the good stuff. And you haven't seen everything that we've both been through before in previous relationships and what it's taken for us to get here. And I keep saying to people who say stuff like that to me, like, it'll happen for you, but, I mean, I've been dating now for, like, six years, and I've had several relationships, and you kind of have to go through the bad to get to the good. If you take anything away from this video, just know that your time is coming, and that person is just waiting for you and when it happens just embrace it and go with it but also like people have asked me quite a few times like oh do you believe you and Risa made for each other are you soulmates and I just want to like put on that I said before in one of my other videos like I don't believe in that stuff what I believe in is hard work like yeah we're incredibly compatible and we get along so well and we've got a lot in common and we want the same things but we also work really hard at our relationship and that's the most important thing if you if you're not willing to work at a relationship then it's not going to work anyway guys that's it just a quick one i just wanted to get that out there because so many people have asked for it if you like this video as always give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel anyway guys until next time